So please, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Greg, uh, for this opportunity to be here uh, uh, and the uh, company of so brilliant minds. And I will uh, present my modest, <laughs> our modest, modest uh, project. So, uh, my name is Anisi. Uh, Michelle uh, is my advisor who couldn't come. And, uh, uh, I teach Greek at the Sao Paulo State uh, University, UNESP, in the city of Araraquara, Brazil. And uh, today I will talk about the Greek teacher genre of activity, or better, about the digital classicist professional genre, its implications for a prospective curriculum in my university. So, uh, the topics are these, uh, genre of activity, digital classes, uh, and transformation of professional genre, and teaching context, the teaching context uh, at my university, and how to teach professional genre and curriculum expected changes. So, what is a genre of activity, professional genre or genre of the métier? Uh, French researchers working with, with organizational psychology of the activity clinic adopted the concept of the genre of métier. Concerned with identifying the protagonists of the transformation of work. I will uh, quote uh, the work of Yves Clo and uh, Daniel Faita, mainly the, uh, his, uh, their article, uh, genre and uh, styles. Uh, the analysis of uh, the work, concepts and methods. Uh, the classic uh, identification of work, which is discarded by the French line, brings the dichotomy between the prescribed and the real, between social prescription and actual activity, or between task and activity, or organ organization versus subject. According to this group, there is an intermediate element. There is a shared collective by those who are working together called uh, the social genre of the métier, which defines the regulation of individual actions. Uh, the concept of genre attributed to Bakhtin and applied to language activity assumes uh, that between the subject and the language are the discourse genre that are devices of social rules, a statement prototypes that guide the use of language. I quote, a genre is always linked to a, uh, uh, to a situation in the social world. Subjects appropriate this genre throughout their development in the same way as grammatical rules and recreate them in the use of language. This, uh, the concept of genre breaks down the dichotomy between individual speech and language, just as a uh, prescribed task at work is not opposed to actual activity, since uh, in actual activity there are socially shared rules that are being performed in one way or another. So these are then, uh, these configure uh, the social genre of the métier. Uh, it is a concept that is based uh, on the economy of action. Uh, it is as if it were a password shared by those who have the same professional horizon and consider it as the uh, social soul of the activity. One can also call the genre of the métier a genre of techniques, since it's configured as a system for the use of techniques within a determined uh, professional environment. What is its importance? According to this group of researchers, the genre of the métier, or professional genre, has an replace, a replaceable psychological function. The abandon of the genre is always the beginning of a distress, or the regulation of an individual. So, are digital classes developing a particular genre of the métier? How does genre become stable? I quote, it's within that which is essentially impersonal that the professional genre plays a psychological role in each one's activity. 
for it organizes the assignments and obligations defining the activities regardless of subjective pro properties of individuals who fulfill at a particular time. It's treat that workers assess and judge one another, each of them evaluate their own action. Uh, Shanghai has a transient stability and it's, uh, it's a tool put to the test in real life, as uh, Pierre Habardel uh, says, 1995 and 1999. The stylistic creations are the oscillations of adaptations to the real that potentiate the transformation of the professional genre, uh, not just the psychological attributes of the subject. I quote, the individual style represents the transformation of genre in the real history of the activities at the moment of acting, in accordance with the circumstances. On the one hand, the genre remains alive thanks to the stylistic recreations. On the other, not mastering the genre and its variant prevents the elaboration of style. This dynamic is naturally a source of conflict. Uh, digital classicist as a group is defined on the web as a community that uses digital humanities applications in the field of classics and ancient studies. Uh, their discussion list uh, began in 2005 with a message from Gabriel Boder. Just before that, in 2003, a discussion list, Classics L, had moved from Washington University, where it had been alive for 11 years, to Kentucky List Sir. I was a Classic Cell and Humanist List Super Subscriber in 1992, and uh, that uh, drove me to join uh, the National Research Network project in Brazil. Now, we are in 2017, and this event discussing digital is discussing digital infrastructure for global philology. That course of events tells me a piece of uh, the genre of transformation. Classic cell and humanist list subscribers put together classicists who already uh, were interested in sharing information and were, and were, although in a traditional way, users of the network services available at that time. Those subscribers already had been in the process of digital instrumentation, as Habardell calls it, in adopting scheme, schemes of usage and instrument mediated action. At, at, that, at that time, 1992, no classes in Brazil had any idea of network service such, such as email or email. <coughs> uh, digital classes discussion group added new needs besides sharing information classes or of digital resources, sharing new problems with digital resources in new environments. Some classes L and humanist list subscribers were potentially the subscriber or, uh, subscribers of digital classes group. So a new community became visible, uh, individual needs turned into group work needs and creating different styles towards a new genre of activity. The, the way I see it, uh, uh, the program of uh, Synoix's Digital Classics, whose idea came originally from the Center of Hellenic Studies, Synoix's, is one of those uh, creations of style inside the professional genre adapting the study of classics and ancient antiquity to different realities and that can uh, lead to a set of performance rules of a professional uh, genre. So uh, what is changing in the traditional genre and in, uh, in those emerging styles in classics besides this, the technical practices that have been created? Can those styles become stable to the genre? Uh, I believe we can point out some stable elements that distinguish the digital genre from the regional professional one. Uh, professional. Uh, the work uh, results from shared uh, processes of creation. The work is performed by a team of co-workers and contributors. The work of knowledge generated is direct to open link data. The work has open access and the work goes into a significant impact to a global audience. So uh, the distinctive uh, keywords of digital classic genre would be sharing, teamwork, open access over uh, digital methods. Uh, 
sharing of data generation, infrastructure and knowledge, a team or, uh, work of different background professionals, students and contributors, open access, which means using open license, standard language and liquid data. The standard language in computing, but contents in multiple languages. <coughs> So, what is the context of teaching Greek at Araraquara? The Greek undergraduate course at Araraquara began in 1967, when the School of Humanities was yet part of the Sao Paulo State University. It was founded by a professor who studied the, at the University of Sao Paulo, uh, in Sao Paulo and went to France to get her PhD along two other professors. One became an archaeologist and founded the Museum of Classical Archaeology at the University of São Paulo, and the other became specialized in modern Greek and introduced the modern Greek extension course at the University of São Paulo. Uh, before uh, 2012, mainly printed materials were used in class and in foreign language. My previous uh, and senior colleagues at UNESCO were very devoted uh, and creative in producing material in Portuguese to use in class, such mini lex, as mini lexon, mini grammars, etc. And founded in 1985 a group of reading plays on stage with costumes uh, uh, and uh, with the students uh, called uh, Gis en scène. Gis means chalk in Portuguese. At that time, the curriculum included double the, double the hours of Greek language per week. Then we have today. Electronic resource, resources such as CLG and Pursuit's Digital Library were used for research or to prepare homework since the end of the uh, uh, 90s at the University of Sao Paulo and uh, UNESCO. I started working at UNESCO at the end of 2003 uh, as a part-time teacher uh, before that, I, I lived in Sao Paulo and worked uh, in Applied Linguistics graduate program at the Catholic University, uh, where there was no uh, classics. Uh, this until the end of... Uh, to, uh, from, from 2004, um, I uh, worked, uh, started working at UNES, uh, and uh, the students used a Moodle platform where we were in the lab, became familiar with Purse's digital library and prepared the ad websites with their homework. After uh, 2012, it was only after 2012, after Tux's workshop, that the classes started using Alpheus tools, first to prepare their homework and then to align their translations. Uh, we were five teachers of Greek then, uh, with one on health leave. We started a project to align Greek to Portuguese translations. And uh, one colleague adopted the lab to teach two, working with Persis and Alpheus at that time. In 2015, we had our Persis Projects Board listed on Persis platform and proceeded with our lab class to banking and aligning translations. The students seem to be more engaged in the aligning translation, but differences in tree back annotation really may make them understand better the syntax while not mastering all the grammar and vocabulary. Articles about the subject were published as well. A compilation of texts originally uh, written in English were translated and published in Portuguese. Uh, since two other colleagues retired and one passed away, from uh, the second semester of 2015, we are two teachers of Greek who have permanent contracts. Also, we have two teachers with temporary uh, uh, contracts who have to submit to an open call and examination every semester to, uh, to maintain the temporary position for the sub subject they will have to teach. And because of the economic crisis in the country, the university doesn't allow us to open a call for a permanent position. So, <laughs> beyond that, Araraquara is, is a small town with 200,000 inhabitants, and UNESCO doesn't have a college for computing or information sciences in the area. Are we participating in the new professional genre at Araraquara? 
So the product of the Greek Portuguese digital dictionary reached its pilot version on the web last January, thanks to the help of uh, an IT employee on campus who can work uh, on uh, our project as a volunteer in his free time. Uh, and, and thanks to the help of Monica too, uh, during Synopsis and uh, her visit to Brazil. And uh, she oriented us about that. Last year, we managed to work on a simple automatic tagger for a TI XML entry free and dev tags. And then uh, he, the IT guy, he worked on the search engine. Uh, there are some uh, limitations related to the way uh, the search uh, should be done. Uh, the word has to be digitized in polytonic Greek, and we need to use a white card uh, to the, at the end of the word. A new problem uh, to digitize polytonic Greek is that, uh, that new Brazilian keyboards for Windows PC uh, have some of the beta code keys for accents in different places. <laughs> so the students have to use a spring keyboard uh, to digitize uh, polytonic brick. We hope to change that in the next phase of the dictionary. Let's see. This is the image of uh, the interface. And uh, this is the result of the way we have to uh, do the search. Uh, the project for aligning translations into Portuguese goes on and we'll have my uh, retired colleague's publications added to our corpus. She recovered the copyrights of her earlier uh, published translations. As some of you know, Portuguese translations of Greek texts are copyrighted, so we need to work on new translations. The classroom activities have been fruitful and sometimes confusing. On, on the one hand, the amount of engage, engaged students is increasing. With two, uh, with two new uh, undergraduate uh, projects, one new master degree and PhD, uh, postdoc projects, uh, applying digital methods and contributing to a corpus of annotated uh, and aligned texts. On the other hand, we have some students who don't understand the transformation in class activity. Uh, some drop the class, and this behavior uh, got worse with students strike last year, along with the boys and teachers association strike. But in general, dropout students are those who can't, for whatever reason, attend classes with uh, regularity and can't usually do homework as well. Therefore, concerning student behavior in classic, uh, the demand or workload of stu study might be still high in the digital context. That raises a question about formal curriculum, of which I'll comment soon. The main barrier was the lack of a, uh, of a Greek Portuguese dictionary, uh, one more accessible, since the only uh, Greek Portuguese dictionary available was a printed one in five volumes. Uh, but now we have this prototype, which I hope uh, it will have many, many students. So, following, following our keywords in terms of sharing data generation, infrastructure, uh, teamwork, open access, we can say we fully participate in a professional genre or an emergent style. I've been changing my work as a teacher with data sharing and contributing to open access. My colleagues are in the process of the Habardell's digital instrumentation, uh, but the local teamwork is still in its, its process of transformation and of generating, generating new uh, teamwork regulations. How to teach a professional genre? Michel's mission as a graduate student of the program of linguistics and Portuguese language at UNESCO is to start developing a program uh, of Greek studies for beginners at the beginning, uh, starting as an online extension course in Portuguese, already having in mind a professional genre of uh, digital classes, although its genre uh, of activity is emerging with different styles. The success of this en his endeavor will be implemented on, uh, on the curriculum as a blended learning with 20% online 
as currently authorized by federal laws applied to regular face-to-face -face courses and will be continued as an extension online course. Otherwise, uh, we have to uh, submit to the approval of the Secretary of Education a proposal for a complete uh, undergraduate uh, distance course or uh, change of the entire curriculum. Uh, in Brazil, uh, in, apply, in the applied uh, linguistics field, many language teachers have their research on teaching text genre and genre of this course. Uh, the Symposium Internacional de Estudos dos Gêneros Textuais, International Symposium of Textual Genre Studies, is an important and regular international event in Brazil. Some say that we can't teach, teach our genre. One need to experiment a genre of activity inside a uh, specific context in order to learn how to produce a text or that specific genre. Others say that one can teach a genre as long as there are many samples of text genre, then one uh, has to analyze them according to one uh, theory of genre, uh, practices, uh, characteristics with students, developing linguistic and discursive capacities, and then elaborating a didactic model uh, of and sequence to achieve a target product. Since we are talking here about the uh, genre of activity, uh, his plan will be to leave, this, to leave the experience of the genre or styles working in different contexts uh, with uh, their respective team working, operating digital classes, research and study, in study environments, and describe uh, their activities, knowledge, skills, and teamwork rules. If he follows the social discursive uh, interactionism approach, he will analyze uh, the, the teamwork gestures, interaction, and discourse. Uh, as an undergraduate student, he had his diploma in Greek and German, uh, and he finished his MA thesis about keyword uh, extraction and tree bank annotation as a way to reach a thematic and syntax of the text. At the same time, he worked with uh, uh, the Rick Display Heracles. So he, uh, he has been practicing with editing environments such as tree bank annotation and aligned translation. Then he has to analyze uh, the actions, choose some of them, and put together in a didactic sequence. Concerning Haberdell's uh, concept of instrumental genesis, the instrumentation process is born of the subject and directed to the subject, him or herself. So the individual action has to be born direct, uh, directly of subject needs. The first step in analyzing the professional genre and elaborating a didactic sequence would be to put together uh, the subject's needs and professional genre activities, either uh, linguistic or operational ones. Uh, that is a cha challenge in education because different classes have different uh, individual needs. Uh, how shall we manage a variety of individual needs into a didactic sequence? We have to suppose that different individual needs entail a common knowledge grounds in the digital classicism genre of activity. Also, since teamwork is an element of this new genre, different needs could be combined into an activity. That is what uh, Michel has uh, to think about. Well, that's uh, a simple image uh, uh, representing the subject's instrumentation process towards a digital process genre of activity or styles. Uh, Michel will have to map and define the action capacities, which includes the digital methods for studying and contributing, the linguistic capacities, academic individual needs, the didactic sequences from the initial to the final goal. Uh, the Greek, uh, a little bit of our uh, curriculum, the Greek major uh, undergraduate four-year curriculum has a total of 240 hours of Greek language. 240 hours of Greek literature from the first to the fourth year, uh, 120 hours of Greek reading and translation, and 45 hours of introductory culture on uh, Greek hero and mythology. The regular students take uh, from eight to 10 courses a semester to finish the program in four years. In general, they finish 
it in five years. As an online extension course, Michelle will have to carefully map the target, target audience and their individual needs, so he can propose text, uh, tests properly. From that experience, we intend to adapt uh, our regular uh, curriculum. So uh, these are the, the references, and that's all I have to <laughs> present to you. So, Anise, can we, is the XML for the Portuguese dictionary available? I see the CC license on the website, but can people get at the XML files? Uh, uh, I, um, or any files? XML. Okay, uh, I, I, I'm building a GitHub for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's still, it has only a couple of uh, tags we should to implement. Let, uh, let me see if I can show here. As I was on the site, fiddling with it as you talk. I mean, I think we want to get it, we, we really want to see multiple <coughs> linguistic customizations for um, Greek and Latin. So you can go effortlessly back and forth. So. Uh, I don't know if I can use. Uh, the problem is I have to put <laughs> the Greek. Down. But uh, you know um, uh, the the result. Let me show. You. The result I have to. Put, oh no, 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 no. It's not very clear here, but okay. Look, I don't think we have to worry about it. We got uh, the point. So uh, I, think... uh, the, 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 I just want to say that uh, the result obtained uh, has no style, has no style uh, uh, separating. Uh, the, the, the meanings or the authors yet, so it's plain. It's a plain text uh, in the result, but it is, it is, this is the next phase of our, our project. I think I want to emphasize. This is on the one hand, this is an attempt to build up the study of Greek in a nation of two hundred million. How big is Brazil? Two hundred million. Yes. Uh, that or it really doesn't exist yet. Is a, a, a nation with a strong incentive, uh, cultural incentive, to engage more closely with this language. Right? A nation that's analogous to the United States, but does not, it's sort of complicated ethically, uh, and prides itself on that. So how do you work this in? But exactly what he is, is describing is a generic problem. In Europe, we have 24 official languages. We have and five languages are spoken by 5% or more of the population, one of them being Russian. Uh, and uh, German, English, French, Italian, Russian, and Spanish uh, are the big ones. If you get outside of the imperial languages uh, into anything, the other 19 EU languages have very few resources. You often do not have a dedicated original Greek or Latin lesson. So, uh, uh, my colleague, Liva Bolognese, is doing the similar, what you're doing, she's bootstrapping a Latvian uh, Latin lexicon. So, when putting it and digitizing it slowly with like no support. But clearly, what we need, what we have here, is a model of bootstrapping linguistic resources for languages. You start by Rich linguistic annotations uh, of your Greek or Latin or your uh, classical Armenian or your or your Syriac. Uh, and you need to be able to generate a grammar from that. What is the grammar that I need to learn to understand this text? And that grammar, the linguistic annotations largely work no matter what language you speak. They're relatively pretty, they're relatively easy to localize uh, into different languages. The complement to that are the other Blind translations. You may not have a dictionary anytime soon in your language, but you heard about this at the beginning of the day. 
as you go up and up a set of line translations, you get, in effect, a rough but very useful source uh, that people could use, especially if you're creating translations that are aligned from the start. So you can pay attention to whether you're using the same word to translate the same word sense of a given word. Uh, and you have some sort of control. The idea is to is we have a capacity to bootstrap resources uh, in new ways. Uh, we also have the opportunities here. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, why are why are my students in the United States or more or less in the same time zone uh, as your students uh, interacting you know, more directly, especially if they don't have any shared language? But, you know, there's the tree. Uh, is this the subjects in box Z or an box Y? I bet they could figure that out in Google Translate. You know, I bet they could get that done. And they would think it was cool. Uh, and that's what you do when you play online, as you probably, you probably know. So this is a real thread, uh, and it's just the kind of thing, I think but also this idea of a, of a genre is really interesting. I think that's what's going on. There's a discussion, different, there's sort of an evolution of a different kind of genre or a new tournament, uh, and, you know, Different people are different, different phases, right? Different ways of thinking about this. But this is really what's happening. Uh, and I just want to finish by saying I think that the we really need a, to think about how we teach the language. What happens when you can walk into class on day one and interact directly <coughs> with Homer or the New Testament or Plato, whatever you're, you want to work with, when it's all richly annotated? How much do you put into your head? How long, you know, and how long, how much time you spend on that? Uh, I personally think I never I think of, if anyone has taken more introductory language courses than me, you have my sympathy. <laughs> uh, and if I will, I cannot stand anymore. If I'm really bad and go to hell. I will sit in first year language classes with idiotic, contrived uh, things about a bricola goes to whatever or. <laughs> You know, the, 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 the charming young couple in Cairo that is used to teach Arabic and drives everybody crazy. You should be engaging only with authentic language from day one. And always know exactly where the vocabulary is going to be, when you're going to use that syntax, and should be connected to your culture. How do we, and you should have one semester of Greek, should give you something. It should be like, you took one semester of Greek, too bad you didn't take three, you know, you've got nothing. Uh, which is what you know, I would have to say right now. Uh, so it's a really, this is a different, I don't know what this means. Uh, I don't know where it's going, how it's going to work out, but it's different. And we need to think about it. We need to think about what's possible. Uh, and you know, we're, like Brazil, United States, we're trying to figure out how to disseminate, how to expand the role of Greek and Latin. We're trying to think about how to expand the role of other languages. Uh, not just Greek and Latin. Like people, I want people working with Latvian, I want them working with Georgian, I want them working with, you know, conscious and engaged with more languages than they can learn. And not just think, if I can spend, you know, if I can't have a conversation in this language, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything with it. Uh, which is also unacceptable. So this is a new kind of ecology. I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> uh, but you can see it here. And what are we doing? This is really, I think a core element to what I what draws me this global theology question. <laughs> so, and this is I hope you can pursue this for else. I'll shut up. What other people we have.